2021 question 10 is asking, what two tasks would be undertaken by a project manager in a software design process? Okay, easiest way to do it is just to think of you and two of your buddies making something, a project in school, like who's in charge of what, what's there to be done? Uh, and I'm sure you've done it. So here's a problem. You're, you're sitting and the bell is always late. Everyone's kind of like standing by the door expecting it to go. And then there's just, just uh, all that waste of life adds up. Um, you're probably not going to be able to fix the bell system that, because the Tannoy system is from like 1980s. So you're going to build a fake bell app. It has to cost 20 euro or less, ready in less than a week, um, you know, inconspicuous and easy to use. So they're the customer requirements. Maybe uh, another student has decided uh, to pay you to do this. So the first thing, I suppose, whoever's in charge is going to have to come up with some kind of like a project timeline, you know, of when it's to be done. Um, they're going to decide who's doing what. Um, so in this case, I'll say Ada is the project lead. Um, she's going to do some of the coding, the, the, the you know, Cody part of it, the back end. Charlie's very good at art and prides himself as a Microsoft Paint master. Or maybe he's going to wireframe it, you know, just and just pen and pencil, maybe crayon, you know, or maybe he's going to write in the blood of his enemies. It's really up to him. It, he's a front end developer there. So um, Tim, testing Tim is going to do QA. Um, he's that one group member who hasn't showed up for four fifths of coding classes. So he'll, he'll just he'll just do the testing and the documentation. He can write about his his day. And Aid is going to do the, the Kanban chart. This is kind of like the little, like, I'll show you one. Here's one I made. So, um, you know, she'll be like, what have I got to do here? I've got to get cookies. And so uh, she might like say this is this is resolved or delete this issue or whatever. So they keep track of things on their timeline here in a, some kind of project management software like, like GitHub. Um, and then the other guys are going to go on to, you know, Thunkable. Here's one I made. Here's what I made earlier. Um, so somebody will be in charge of the, the front end uh, and someone will be in charge of the back end. In this case, the back end is not text coding. It's just literally a block that says, play this sound. So I just stood up at the end of the lesson and recorded this on my phone. Um, but now um, when you press go uh, and press play, there we go, it plays a bell very loudly. And then this button down here, um, when you press it, it, it waits a random amount of time. So you can walk up to the teacher, you know, we haven't pushed this on your phone and you can be like, God, like the bell just never seems to go on time, isn't it? You know, and you could be mid conversation. So there's no possible way it could have been you pushing that fake ball button. But all of a sudden, mid conversation is going to be, I'm going to keep talking here because I said a random time from 10. God, it's really going to be upper level here. Come on. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Uh, a random time. Okay, so... Uh, there you go. And let's look at what the marking scheme is asking for here. Agree requirements with the customer. We, we talked about that. Ensure the system is delivered with on time within budget, 20 euro, great budget. Oversee the project schedule. We said that, resource it. I did mention the cookies being crucial. Um, sometimes you're just in charge of sandwiches. Um, assign the tasks, that's, um, the kind of Kanban chart and assigning issues to people, communicate, motivate team with cookies, monitor progress and any relevant task. I mean, let's look at the second part of this. Um, yeah, programming languages. Some are really nitty gritty and some are easy to use like Python. Um, it's saying uh, some programming roles require knowledge of low level programming. Um, how does a low level programmer differ from a high level computer program? Well, uh, firstly, to just explain this, right? If you're using Scratch and App Inventor, those are block kind of coding. Actually, if you look under the hood, behind the curtain is is JavaScript. For example, Microsoft um, in microbits. You know, you can click the the JavaScript, and it's all running on JavaScript. And they are examples of high level programming languages. But actually, if you pull the curtain back further, a lot of those, you know, will go and, and they'll turn that English words like print into some sort of assembly language. And that assembly language will, uh, you know, be made up of ones and zeros. That's kind of the machine code. Um, and thank goodness you don't have to code like with machine code because you literally have to like you have two two keys in your keyboard, which is be one and zero. Um, and then those ones and zeros, you know, operate the actual circuit boards on the hardware itself. 
So, um, yeah, there's some, there's some, uh, something I, I randomly Googled image and you can see, I mean, I think this is nice because it gives you some examples there of the high lang high level languages and the, the more like low level assembly stuff, you know? Um, and why would you need to use these? Well, some, <laughs> some devices, like if you're coding like a, like a Casio watch or something or something uh, for, for a drone or like the inside of a car, it might not have like a full PC with Windows and an OS where you can go on Chrome. It might just be pretty much a load of circuit boards and some chips and you might have to, oh, you might not be able to run Python, do you know? Um, so you might actually have to do this assembly language kind of stuff. So um, the marking scheme here says, High level languages, such as Python, Java, I use English words like while, if, I use set print, so there's an example, yeah. So programs written in these languages are then translated into machine code using a compiler uh, interpreter. So if you're using C, for example, all times you have to press like compile and then run. If you ever use um, an Arduino instead of a microbiter, you'll, you'll notice, you know, actually in, in fairness, a microbits also compile it when you press save and you save your stuff in a micro bit, you open it up, it's all ones and zeros. Like you can't, you can't look into the text file and make sense of it. So, um, or is it ones and zeros? It might actually be, it might be hex or something like that, but basically it's, 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 it's definitely low level at that stage. So uh, it says here, they used to write code for specific processor architectures. Um, the instruction is constrained by processors instruction set. And it says examples are assembly languages, machine code, written in ones and zeros. So that's what you got to say, something along that lines um, for those marks. I'll just show you very briefly as well, um, this running, this is assembly language here. Um, so if you were to write it, this is a nice little uh, thing from Peter Higginson. Um, and yeah, if you, if you run this guy's code, you can see literally things going back and forth. So I'm going to add like one and enter. And you can see it going through the controller. And it's a nice way of also looking at like how, um, I'm gonna add one and two together, how a processor works, you know? And you can see it going back and forth between the the main memory here. So this is assembly language, but you might have something above this that takes Python or JavaScript and then turns it into assembly language. And then it runs this down through the, through the processor. And there's your output is one and two is three. Cool, so that's it.